<coughs> I will present uh, estimating the social return to higher education, evidence from longitudinal and repeated cross-sectional data by Enrico Moretti from UCLA. It has been published on the Journal of Econometrics in 2003. Well, um, the presentation is structured with a brief intro introduction, then um, in model uh, evidence uh, will follow, then estimation results and at the end conclusions. So, um, this paper, um, so it, um, the aim of this paper is to pinpoint a consistent methodology um, to assess how beneficial it is uh, for society to have a higher level of education in the job market. Um, and the author uh, want to give um, evidence in favor of the thesis that social return uh, to education makes it private one. Um, it is important to estimate the social return to education as it has um, really important implication uh, for uh, policy purposes. And also, uh, there's a um, small literature so far developed um, from which the, the, which the paper is based on as uh, the, the works from Roach on Ashimoglu and Angris. Um, the author so uh, tests the hypothesis that um, an, um, economic returns are reflected in the wages of um, workers. And so, uh, um, an, higher, an higher share of uh, educated workers in the market <coughs> may have uh, positive effects also on the um, lower educated uh, workers. Uh, in this paper, the focus is, is not on the whole society, but on uh, distinct cities that have um, almost same, the same characteristics. Um, in order to have uh, different individuals to compare, um, that perhaps are in the same, um, that have the same opportunity in the various cities. So, um, uh, the analysis <coughs> is carried out with um, oil, uh, mainly with OLS estimation of full data and uh, in a simple neoclassical model and of the um, simple time series. Um, then uh, there are some panel and panel and cross-sectional data fixed effect regressions, and then at the end there's a two-way uh, two, two stages least square regression in order to um, to conclude uh, the, um, the the whole estimation. Uh, the data used in the in this paper are the um, 1917, 1918, and 1919 census data and the um, National Longitudinal Survey of Youth, um, those are data for uh, wages and level of education, and there's the public usage uh, micro areas that, are, that provide some uh, geographical data. Well, <coughs> the, the, the model is based on a simple neoclassical, um, the, the paper is based on a simple neoclassical model, um, that um, aims to uh, underline uh, the effect of an increase in the share of educated uh, workers in a city, um, checking for imperfect substitution effect and human capital spillover effect if there, are, if, if there is one. But, um, the, the model is simple, uh, here we can see that uh, workers' productivity is a function of the share of educated workers of the spillover, if there's one, so it's, ma it's magnitude, and of other um, group-specific on capital um, effects. Um, well, um, here um, we want to test um, what happens if we increase S, and we start from it, uneducated workers. Uh, this is the, I'll show directly the effect of an increase in S on the log wage, and uh, skip the formal definition of wages. And we see that there are mainly two effects. A first one, uh, that is positive, that is imperfect substitution effect. Um, for example, to clarify this, this effect, um, an advanced trained uh, computer scientist uh, cannot be replaced perfectly by a dropout, for example. And then we have another effect that is positive, as we allow in this model for a positive uh, spillover. Um, that ends um, um, enhance the total effect, the, the previous effect, 
And so we have an overall positive effect, meaning that uh, unmotivated workers actually benefits from an, um, an, increasing, an increasing share of um, educated work. Then we move to the educated workers themselves, and, we, uh, and, the, and the, um, the model suggests that there's an, ambi an ambiguous uh, effect, an, over uh, an overall ambiguous effect. In fact, we have a first negative effect due to the conventional supply effect, that is the higher the quantity, the lower the value, let's say. And then we have again a positive effect due to the spillover. So we can conclude that on educated workers, in order to have a positive effect on wages, um, the, the magnitude of the spillover uh, must be uh, large enough to offset the, the other negative effect. Then to conclude this, this framework, which we will, uh, we are going to analyze what happens on the external return uh, to education that is defined as the derivative of the log average wages minus uh, the prevalence return, that is the difference in, in log wages. So we see that there are three effects. The first one is negative, the supply effect before. The second is the imperfect substitution that is indeed um, positive. And then we have the, um, um, the spillover effect that in this case is irrelevant as we, uh, we can conclude that the other effect depends on the uh, share of output that goes to uh, educated workers. In fact, it has to be at least greater than a third of the shares that goes to the uneducated ones. Um, anyway, I have to state that this is a, um, a, a conclusion based on US data, so it's, it cannot be considered a general chief. Well, um, now I move to the, to the model, but I have to uh, clarify one thing before. Um, uh, an, sub uh, an imperfect substitution effect cannot create a uh, market failure on itself, but if there are human spillover, then we can face a market failure. In fact, here, um, a, mo a model a la Rothbach is proposed, that is a model in which an equilibrium exists only if there are externalities. Uh, the model is again a simple one, and we want to test. So I'm not going. I'm not going deeper into the model specification, but just let me clarify the framework. We have two CDs, let's say A and B, um, that are equal at the beginning. They only have different trends, so the cost of living there is different. We want to test again uh, the, um, what happens if we move the share of educated workers. And we want to do this now uh, in two cases, by shifting the supply of educated workers in the first case and then by shifting the demand. So, as first, if we move the, to move the, the supply of educated workers, we, uh, we have to make an assumption, that is this one. We, as, uh, we assume that CD, uh, CDB provides more amenities than CDA. Amenities are uh, valued by the educated workers. So, uh, starting from point one in both the panel, uh, we will see that educated, work, educated workers will move to uh, CD, uh, CDB, so they shift here, and see that. While the perceived effect uh, by the society is the blue area. So, uh, because of this, we will probably have uh, OLS estimates that will be downward biased. Now, um, there's the other cases in which we, we move the demand of the, of the educated workers. And to do so, we assume that technology in CDB is greater than technology in CDA. So higher technology will uh, increase the demand for educated workers. Um, they